What's cracking everyone? Titanic Llama here and today we're talking about bosses. Foul tarnished. Most games have bosses and we as gamers generally like to defeat them. Whether it's the hulking monstrosities of the FromSoft titles or raid bosses that it takes groups of players to take down in MMOs like WoW or Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> all the way down to the secretive or more hidden bosses that are scattered throughout games these days. If it's a boss, we want its head, and generally it's loot. Mostly just it's loot. But Llama, what does this have to do with the video at all? Well, Eidolon, like many other games, has bosses, and not just bosses, but mini-bosses. And have you ever wondered where all of the mini-bosses in Eidolon are, or maybe how to spawn them? While some mini-bosses simply require you to be on a specific map at a certain time, there are others that have to be actively summoned and some that aren't so obvious and are classified as secret mini-bosses. And that is the topic of this video. Where to find and how to summon every mini-boss in Eidolon. Also, stick around to the end of the video as I'll give you a big tip on how to maximise your drops from certain mini-bosses. So welcome to part one of Alama's mini-boss guide. Now, the only reason why I say this is going to be part one is eventually there will be more mini bosses added to the game over time, and I have no intention to remake this video each and every time a new one is added, so I'll just eventually end up making a part two to cover those bosses when those are a thing, I guess. But without further ado, let's get right into it, shall we? First off, what are mini bosses and why should you care about them? Well, mini bosses are simply additional bosses found throughout the worlds of Eidolon that are completely optional. You don't need to fight these to open up portals or to progress in any way, but they tend to have certain items unique to them that you will want to farm out. Most of the time, this will be the card relating to the boss as boss cards tend to have some really nice bonuses and other times this will be star talent books that you will want to farm out until you get the max level of said star talent. On top of this, mini bosses are a really good source of both gems and time candies, so they are certainly worth going out of your way to kill even after you've collected all of the cards and star talent books relating to each boss. All these mini bosses are simple tank and spank fights, so as long as you can survive and damage them, you can fight them. And finally, some of these bosses can be found repeatedly through the Colosseum as the final wave of each world's Colosseum will spawn a certain boss monster from each world. And I'll point these out as we go. So I feel like the best way to go through these mini bosses will be world by world and there's no better place to start than hitting that like button. I mean, world one. So world one is home to two mini bosses that we can fight. These being Baba Yaga. Introducing Baba Yaga. Total HP, 150,000. Accuracy required, 450. Defense required. 466 in order to take no damage. Card effect, extra money percent from monsters. And Dr. Deficus. Baba Yaga is most likely the first mini boss that 99% of players will come across as the follow up quests from getting your world one classes lead you to this boss. But for those of you who never read any dialogue in any game, that's why you have me. Baba Yaga resides on the Birch Enclave map, which the lower left portal on the Bored Beans map will take you to. This boss will spawn every hour on the hour. There's nothing else that you have to do to get this guy to spawn. Just be on this map before the turn of the hour and Baba Yaga will spawn anywhere from instantly to about five minutes past the top of the hour. So if you don't see a pop-up straight away, don't teleport away or leave the map. Just give it a few minutes and eventually it will come out of hiding. This boss can be a little bit buggy sometimes, so getting to the map a couple of minutes before the turn of the hour can help avoid any issues with the boss not spawning. And finally, Bubba can be farmed more regularly by completing the World 1 Colosseum as this is the boss that will spawn on the final wave of this colo. Bubba's main drop that you will want to farm out is the recipe for the Serrated Rex Ring. This allows you to upgrade the Rex Rings that you get from the dungeon shop, which will make them give more skilling efficiency and give slightly more stats. On top of this, if you have points in the World 1 Merit Shop bonus, mini bosses will drop new Star Talent books. Bubba will also drop books for the Star Talents Just EXP and Frothy Mole. Next up, we have the Doctor. Introducing Dr. Deficus. Total HP, 750,000. Accuracy required, 900. Defense required, 1,200 in order to take no damage. Card effect, increases total damage percent. 
Dr. Deficus can be found on the office map which is located to the bottom left of the rats map in the sewers. This guy will spawn once per day when your daily reset happens, meaning you can only kill this guy once a day. If you are unsure on when your daily reset is, you can go to any shop in the game and see when this resets. This time in here is the same time as your daily reset. Dr. Deficus drops the Polished Bludgeon recipe which is an upgrade to the Strung Bludgeon neck piece which drops from Mafiosos, and also a couple of tools that you'll want to grab for the slab eventually. And just as with Bubba Yaga, if you have points in the World 1 Merit, mini bosses will drop new star talent books, Dr. Def will also drop the books relating to Just EXP and Frothy Mulk. Next up we have World 2 which contains the bosses Biggie Hours and King Dude. The World 2 mini bosses err more on the side of secret or hidden type mini bosses, both of which have multiple steps to initially spawn and we'll go over Biggie Hours first. Introducing Biggie Hours! Total HP 800,000 Accuracy required 900 Defense required 594 in order to take no damage Card effect Percent chance to double AFK claims. To spawn Biggie Hours, you'll first need to farm the Crab Cake Monsters until they drop the recipe to craft Googly Eyes. These Googly Eyes take two Wardula Circles, five Distilled Water, and one Capitalist Case, which are the bags bought from the Tiki Vendor in World 1. You can only purchase three of these a daily, meaning that you can make a maximum of three Googly Eyes per day. Though you can choose to save these up, similar to Boss Keys, as Biggie Hours has no cooldown on how often it can be summoned, meaning you can kill Biggie Hours as many times as you have the eyes to summon him with. Once you have made a pair of googly eyes, you need to bring them to the Mimics map and take note of the broken hourglass on the top left of the map. You want to drop the eyes onto the hourglass and this will spawn Biggie hours for you to fight. And as was the case with Bubby Yugga, Biggie will be the boss that you encounter on the final wave of the World 2 Coliseum. Biggie has three notable drops, these being the Minute Glass item which you will want to save some of these for the Yum Yum Desert Completion Trophy and to craft the e Font Legs, and the other two are both recipes, one for the Skullfish Pendant which is an upgraded version of the Fishing Pendant from the Dungeon Shop, and the recipe to make the Star Talent Reset Potions. Biggie is mostly used as a loot pinata as he tends to drop a good amount of candy and gems for where he is in the game. And finally, same as World 1, if you have points in the World 2 Merit Shop bonus, higher chance for World 2 mini bosses to drop a new star talent, then Biggie also has the chance to drop both the Pulsation and Cardiovascular star talent books. King Doot is up next and easily the most effort goes into summoning this boss, at least for the first time anyway. Introducing King Doot! Total HP. 3 million. Accuracy required 1.5k. Defense required 973 in order to take no damage. Card effect. Total drop rate. Hey yo, just me, Llama, jumping in here just to tell you that this is one of the most used cards in game, so make sure you farm out your dudes. Just as with Biggie, we are going to need an item, but this time it's to enter King Dudes Arena, and these will also act as boss keys to resummon him once you are in his arena. The item that you are going to need is the Dude Jet Eye, which the recipe to craft this drops from Sand Giants, and these require 5 ghosts, 80 gold bars and one silver antique to craft. Again, these are from the Tiki vendor in World 1. You can only purchase one of these per day, but similar to the googly eyes, you can save these up, make multiple eyes and kill King Doot as many times as you have the eyes to summon him with. Once you have your eye, you're going to need to find two other players on the same world and server to help you summon King Doot for the first time. Both of these players are also going to need to have a Doot Jat Eye to enter the room with you. And on top of this, you are going to need one player of each class archetype, meaning you're going to need one warrior class, one of the archer classes, and one of the mage classes, so keep this in mind when looking for a group. Once you have your group and everyone has their eyes, you need to come to this little altar on the left side of the Sand Giants map. Dropping an eye onto the altar will open a portal to enter King Doot's arena. A quick note here though, if you do drop a stack of eyes, only one will be consumed. Just remember to pick up the rest of the stack before entering Doot's portal or else they are gone for good. Once everyone has dropped their eye and entered the portal room, each person must say something in-game to activate the pillar in the middle of the room that corresponds to their class. 
Once all three pillars are active, Doot will spawn and the fight begins. Other than some extra attacks, he is still just a tank and spank fight. He will however spawn some bouncing balls and some fire columns to help damage you. King Doot has three notable drops. The Protector's Pride Recipe, which is an upgrade to the Defender's Dignity Ring, which the recipe for that drops from Mimics. The trimmed runeplate leggings, which are an awesome little runescape easter egg, and are certainly really good legs if you manage to snag a pair of these early on. And finally, he will drop an item called the Dudaphone. Clicking and holding this item whilst it is in your inventory as if you are using a capacity bag will activate all of the pillars within King Doot's arena, allowing you to effectively farm this boss solo from here on out, as long as you bring this item with you. And just a reminder, you will need to bring extra Doot Jet eyes if you wish to kill this boss multiple times as these effectively work as boss keys. Same as Biggie, if you have points in the World 2 Merichop bonus, higher chance for World 2 mini bosses to drop new star talents, then Dude also has the chance to drop both the Pulsation and Cardiovascular star talent books. World 3 and 4 break the mold a little bit, each only having one mini boss, but they do work the same as each other, so I will cover them together. World 3 has the dilapidated slush mini boss, while World 4 has the mutated mush mini boss. But before I can go over how to summon these guys, I should explain that they work a little bit differently to the other bosses, as these guys work off a timer based system similar to how books in the library work. You can summon these guys once every 4 days. But like library books, if you don't go and kill the boss right away, after a certain amount of time has passed, the boss count will increase. For example, if you wait another 3 days, so 7 in total, 2 slushes or mushes will spawn when summoning these bosses. But I liken these to library books as after the 7 day period has passed, the time to spawn additional bosses starts to climb, taking 4 more or 11 total days to get to 3 bosses to spawn, and then 16 days for a total of 4 bosses to spawn, and this keeps climbing until they reach their cap of 10 slushes and only 8 mushes spawning after 69 days. Nice. Some may have already picked up on this, but this actually means that it is best to kill these bosses once per week as it takes 4 days to spawn a single boss, but only 7 days to spawn 2, which is good to know if you are trying to play as efficiently as you can. So with that out of the way, how do we actually spawn these guys? Introducing the Dilapidated Slush. Total HP, 12.5 million. Accuracy required, 3k. Defense required, 19.5k in order to take no damage. Also, hey, me, Llama again. Just a side note with the dilapidated slush, it has a monstrous amount of defense required, but they're immobile mobs, so you won't take damage from these unless you walk into them. Card effect, plus percent money from monsters. Well, as for the dilapidated slush, you will need to find the recipe to make the bucket of slush item, which can drop from any monster from blokes to thermisters. You will only need 5 melty cubes, 20 snowballs, and 5 iron bars to craft this item, and one will be enough to summon all of the slushes that you have saved up. Once you have your bucket of slush, you will need to bring it to the blokes map and drop it onto the pile of snow on this top right platform. This will spawn all of the dilapidated slushes across the map and these guys don't really move at all so as long as you don't walk into them you shouldn't take any damage from these guys. And finally, being the only mini boss in World 3, as you would guess, this is the guy that you will fight at the end of the World 3 Colosseum. The dilapidated slush again has three notable drops. The Midnight Stopwatch Recipe, which is an upgrade to the Silver Stopwatch, which is a reward from Fun Guy's third quest, Party Crastination. The Slush Skull, which is a worship skull that itself is pretty useless, but it is used as a material to craft the Dreadnought Skull, which is currently the best skull in the game. But it won't be for much longer, as I'm making this guide just before World 6's release. And finally, the Slushy Obel of Much Dilapidation, which is a hexagon obel that gives plus skilling efficiency, which are really handy for increasing your 3D printer samples. Which for now, just leaves us with the Mutated Mush from World 4. Introducing the Mutated Mush. Total HP, 120 million. Accuracy required, 6.8k. Defense required, 3.6k in order to take no damage. Card effect, plus percent cooking EXP gains. 
This boss has two items which can be used to summon it and both of them are fairly easy to obtain. These are Toxic Sludge which drops from slimes in World 1 and Radioactive Waste which can be attained randomly from the 3rd, 4th and 5th post office orders. Once you have your chosen barrel of oil, you need to bring it to the top platform of the purple mushrooms map in World 4 where all of these smaller mushrooms are growing. Dropping your oil onto the platform will spawn all of your saved up mushies all at once the same as how the slushes spawned. These guys however are mobile but they require a ton less defense to take no damage from and again as this guy is the only mini boss in World 4, he is who you'll be facing on the final wave of the World 4 Colosseum. The Mutated Mush takes its job as being a loot piñata very seriously, but I'll get to why in a second. First, it has two notable drops, both of these being recipes. The first is to the Dawn Stopwatch, which is an alternate upgrade to the Silver Stopwatch that we previously discussed. And the second is to the Souped Lab Ring, which is an upgrade to the Lab Ring that drops from Demon Genies. But the reason why I say this guy is a really good loot piñata though, is not only does he drop a good amount of gems and candy, but it also drops eggs and ladles which will help you to push your breeding and cooking which is a nice little bonus. And finally, as I teased at the beginning of the video, I have one big tip to help maximize your drops when killing these mini bosses. This works for every boss except for Dr. Deficus, King Doot, and kinda isn't worth bothering with for Baba Yaga either, but it can still be done for Baba if you want to. So, if you set up to kill these mini bosses on a DK, you can actually spawn your orb on the map before summoning the boss and kill a bunch of monsters on the map to increase your orb's count, which in turn increases your drop rate. It will take some time to get a feel for how many orb kills that you can push while leaving enough time to summon and smash the like button before the orb despawns, but it is certainly worth doing as this can make a big difference to the number of gems dropped along with how many candies and also the quality of the candies that do drop when you kill your mini bosses. And in the case of the mutated mush, this will also increase the amount of eggs and ladles that you receive, which is always awesome. And for now, that's every mini boss in Eidolon. So with that being said, I've been Titanic Llama, you've been watching a video, and I'm out. Peace.